<laughs> so, did, have you guys made like New Year's resolutions? Do you guys do that? Make New Year's resolutions and stuff? Um, I, would, I would imagine, I would venture to guess that probably the most common New Year's resolution is losing weight, right? Do you think that's the most common one? I want to lose 10 pounds, or I want to get in shape, or something like that. I, that's probably the most common one. I, probably up there near the top would be like saving money. I want to save more money this year, or finishing some household projects. Um, I want to read more. What, what are some other common ones that people make? What is it? Quitting some bad habits is a good one. Are there any other ones? Be better behaved. That's a good one for Mary Jo Plimeter. <laughs> I'm just, she's the one who brought it up. She's the one who brought it up. You know, it's, it's interesting with New Year's resolutions, you know, um, because not a lot of people make um, formal New Year's resolutions like they used to, and, and I'm like that too. I, it's, been, it's been a couple years since I've made formal New Year's resolutions. But I do have some informal ones, you know, things that I want to work on, um, things that I know I need to, I need to maybe improve. And, and as I think about, like, changes that I want to see in myself, my brother, my brother Tony is a huge inspiration to me. Uh, my, my brother... Six years ago, this weekend, ended up in the hospital diagnosed with diabetes. And he made that decision on that day to get healthier. And he lost a ton of weight just by exercising and eating better. I mean, that's all he did is just exercise and eat better. But it's incredible when you look at these pictures of him before um, compared to where he is right now. It's just amazing, you know? So he, he inspires me not to lose a ton of weight necessarily, but just to stay active and to use moderation, right? To kind of focus some good habits on, on my physical self. But when I think about, when I think about the coming year, I, there's also some things I want to work on on the inside. You know, I, I want to I work on, on peace within my spirit. I want to work on emotional health um, within my spirit. I want to work on m more diligence in my devotions. And, and, and I know that you probably have a list of other things uh, that I need to be working on too. But I got to start somewhere. So I'm going to start with my list. So that's where I'm going to start. Uh, but you know, it's interesting when you think about the New Year's resolutions, the, the, the benefit of having an informal resolution is that it's really just between me and God, right? I mean, nobody can tell me the pace I need to go. Nobody else can set my goals for me. It's just me and God doing that. So that's the advantage of having informal resolutions. The disadvantage is that that's exactly why so many of them fail, right? Because nobody knows about them, and so there's no accountability with it. Probably the biggest, I'd say the biggest thing with with New Year's resolutions or, or resolutions in general, the biggest problem is, is theory versus practice. Wanting something to happen as opposed to actually doing something to make it happen. Right? I mean, I, I, that's probably the reason. The reason why so many of us don't make the changes that we want to make in our lives, the reason that so, so many of us don't make the changes we need to make is probably because of comfort. We just kind of, we get locked into our schedules and our routines, and to break out of that, it, man, it's hard. It requires sacrifice. I mean, and we don't want to do that. When my brother decided to make this change, he had sacrificed sugar. He identified sugar as this, this thing that he needed to cut way, way back on. And so he did. But that was a sacrifice for him to do that. And then he saw the results, right? Other people cut back on carbohydrates, and they see tremendous results from that. Other people cut salt out, and they see great results from that. You know what? So I look at my diet. I look at my diet right now. To cut out salt or sugar or carbohydrates would be a huge challenge for me because I love those things. You know? Could I do it? Could I do it? Probably. Is it worth the cost? See, that's kind of the question, isn't it? Is it worth the cost? What is it going to take for me to see the changes in my life that I want to see? What's it going to take? What is the cost to make those changes? And is it worth it? I mean, that's what I've been kind of thinking about for myself as I look ahead at the coming year. But it's also what I think about when I think about the church. You know, what, what are the changes that I want to see in my life? What are the changes that I want to see in the church? What are those changes going to take? What does it cost to see those changes? And is it worth the cost? 
Now, I can't change the church. I can't change the church, right? I mean, that's something that we would have to do, and we do that. We do that with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads that process. In a month, we're going to be having a leadership retreat for our council members. We're going to look at the church's mission, the church's purpose, what happens to a church when they engage in that mission intentionally, and how does that unleash the Holy Spirit to work within that church. I'm really excited about this coming year. I think some amazing things are going to be happening this coming year. But today, I want us to think about this on a smaller scale. I want us to think about me or you. What does it take to see positive changes in yourself over the coming year. You know, when I think about me, I think about the changes I want to see in myself. And I'm, I'm thinking especially internal stuff. I'm thinking about spiritual growth. And I'm thinking about developing patience in my life and, and thinking about diligence in my devotions and a more powerful prayer life. When I'm thinking about those things I want to see in my life, I recognize that that means I'm going to have to leave some other things behind. I, I'm smart enough to see that, right? And that makes sense, doesn't it? Doesn't that make sense? If I'm carrying all the stuff that I'm carrying right now in my life, if I'm carrying all that stuff, I'm going to need to let go of some of it if I see the need for change, right? That makes sense? But, I mean, that's kind of the starting point for all of us, isn't it? Do we see the need for change? When you look at yourself, when you look at your own life, do you see the need for some change there? Do you see the need for growth? Do you see yourself as a work in progress? Do you see yourself as not done yet? Still needing some, still needing some growth? Do you see the need for change? Because if we don't see the need for change, we're just not going to do anything different at all. Take a look with me at a, at a passage in Scripture, Mark chapter 1, if you, if you brought a Bible with you. Um, if you didn't bring a Bible, you could use, uh, there's ones in front of you, or you could use your phone or something too. This will be in the back, near the back of the Bible, in the New Testament, Mark chapter 1. Um, Mark is one of the Gospels. There's four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Gospels tell us the story of Jesus' life, and they talk about his miracles and the teachings, and really, really good to stay in the Gospels, stay in the story of Jesus. So Mark, it's commonly understood that Mark was the earliest of the Gospels to be written down. And uh, interestingly, Mark was, is one of the Gospels that does not tell us the story of Jesus' birth. He doesn't talk about that at all. M Matthew and Luke talk about that, but Mark picks up at the beginning of Jesus' Jesus' public ministry. So Jesus is 30 years old when Mark, Mark picks up. And so the first thing that we see in Mark is John the Baptist announcing Jesus coming, and then Jesus gets baptized, and then he gets tested by the devil. And, and that's what's happened in Mark 1 so far. And then this is what happens right after that. So we're looking at verse 16. This is what, It's really short. This is what it says. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat, repairing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men. You know, it's, I, I think this is such an interesting little story, tiny little story, because it makes me wonder, why in the world did these guys do this? Why did, they, why did they just leave everything behind to follow Jesus? They, they didn't know anything about him. They'd never met him. He comes along and he says, follow me, and they leave behind their steady careers, they leave behind all this stuff, and they follow him. Why? Why? I mean, the only thing that makes sense is that these guys saw the need for change in their lives and they recognized Jesus as the one who could bring that change. And so when I look at myself and, and I think about, you know, for any of us that want to see positive change in 2019, what is it going to take for us to find that change? And I think, I think the first thing that we, we need to do is exactly what these disciples did, and that is follow Jesus as he goes forward. Right? If you want to see positive change, and especially if you want to see positive spiritual change in your life, you and I have to commit to following Jesus where he goes. But what that means, this is important, what that means is that we have to figure out what it is 
that we have to leave behind. You know, one of the little details in this little story here, and it's so easy to miss this, is what, what, the, what the disciples leave behind in order to follow Jesus. Did you pick it up? Simon and Andrew, what did they leave behind? Did you, did you hear it? They left their, what was it? They left their nets behind. It says, they left their nets behind and followed him. What about James and John? What did they leave behind? They left their father behind. I'm not making this up. You can read this. They left their nets behind. They left their father behind. I mean, think about this. How hard it is to leave behind our nets, our jobs, to leave our family behind. Whew, man, is that hard, isn't it? I mean, sometimes we get so wrapped up in our jobs. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our families that they become so integral to our identity that maybe they start to take the place of God in our lives. So instead of us following Jesus, we're actually following our jobs and following our families and inviting Jesus to come along. So for some of us, I wonder if maybe we need to look at this and leave, leave our jobs and leave our families. In a sense, I'm not, I'm not telling you to leave your family, but understand their role in your life understand the role of your job in your life and what that means is you follow Jesus. And so if your job and your family have too big of a place, if, that, if they're taking the place of God, you need to redefine that in your life. You need to redefine that. But for some of us, it's not us, right? Some of us, we have a good balance of that. But some of, for some of us, it might be something else. What do you need to leave behind in your life? Is it some equality inside that's just got a hold on you? Is it, is it anger this year that's just had a hold on you? Is it lust? Is it, is it laziness? Is it like a reliance on something like drugs or alcohol or needing the approval of others. You know, what, what is it that you need to leave behind? Because we all have baggage. We all have got this baggage. And sometimes we just get so used to carrying all this baggage that it becomes really hard to see around it. We can't see where Jesus is leading. So we know how to follow him. And so if you want to see positive change in your life this year, the first thing you've got to do is figure out what you're going to leave behind. What are you going to leave behind? What do you have to drop if you're going to follow Jesus more closely this year. Now, sometimes that, it doesn't mean dropping it completely, right? Sometimes it just means cutting back on something or redefining it, like family or like, like our job. But there are some things that you may need to leave completely behind. And you've got to wrestle with that. I mean, you, it's going to be different for all of us. You've got to wrestle with that. And it's going to be hard. But honestly, at the end of this year, at the end of 2019, if you're still carrying all the same stuff that you're carrying right now, if you haven't left anything unhealthy behind, you're probably not going to see positive change, right? Does that make sense? So think about what it is that is keeping you from being who God is calling you to be. What is keeping you from that? What do you need to leave behind? Is it greed? Is it selfishness? Is it, is it pride? What do you need to leave behind? The second thing that, that we need to do if we want to have healthy growth this year is we need to have a way to measure our progress. And this is, this is just to make sure that we're, that we're staying on the right path, right? Again, it's, it's theory versus practice. It's having good intentions versus doing things to actually help those things happen, right? Because at some point, it's not enough to just want there to be change in your life. It's not enough for that. You, at some point, you're going to have to let go of some of the unhealthy things. And when the temptation arises to pick those things back up, to say the wrong thing, to do the wrong thing, you, you have to be ready to say no. That is not who I am anymore. That's not who I want to be anymore. Those things may have been a part of my past, but I'm leaving those, I'm leaving those behind. So when do you evaluate how you're doing on this? When do you reflect on your direction and how you're doing? When do you do that? For me, it's in the morning. I do that in my morning devotions. I mean, that's my time when it's quiet. I can read scripture and I can pray. And I can think back, and I do this. I think back on the day before. And I mean, what, what did I do yesterday that helped me grow spiritually? What did I do that reflected the heart of, of Christ? What did I do that helped me represent him? And where did I drop the ball? I mean, there were thing, a lot of things that I didn't do well. What were those things, and why did that happen? 
What can I do to make an adjustment as I go forward for the next day? So when I'm sitting there in the morning doing my devotions, that's the perfect time for me. But maybe it's a different time. Maybe at nighttime is better for you. Before you go to bed, you can reflect back on the day to think about what went well and what needs to be changed for tomorrow. Maybe it's Sunday before worship. I, I, you know, whenever. That's not doesn't matter what time it is, right? What matters is if you don't have a time if you don't have any time to reflect on how you're doing in your growth, it's so easy for our good intentions to just stay good intentions. Just this desire of what we want to happen at some point in life. But to make excuses along the way and never actually make any change at all. So set a little time aside. Set a little time aside on a regular basis just to, just to figure out how am I doing and what do I need to adjust as I go. Good? So you got to think about it. I mean, when you want positive change, you think about what do you need to leave behind? How are you going to measure your progress? The third thing that, that you're going to need to do this year is you need to set your expectations reasonably. This is important. I mean, nobody here is going to be able to master a change immediately. So don't think that you can do that. And don't think that you're going to fail. And don't think that you're expected not to. You know, nobody likes to fail, right? I mean, none of us like to drop the ball, especially when there's a change in us that we really, really want to see and we know that we need to see. Nobody wants to fail. But guys, if you beat yourself up every time you drop the ball, if you chastise yourself over and over every time you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or think the wrong thought, if you do that over and over, you're going to give up on these changes and just decide that it's not for you. Don't do that. Be gracious with yourself. I mean, you've got to understand, and I think we know this here, that when you make a decision to create positive change in your life, when you make a concerted effort to follow Jesus more closely, you, you're going to make some enemies. You're going to make enemies. Because people don't want you to change your priorities. When you make a concerted effort for positive, healthy change in your life, you're going to tick some people off. You're going to tick the devil off. So you can expect some pushback. You can expect it. When you drop the ball, when you fall, and you will, don't beat yourself up. Just make a decision. Next time, I'm not going to do that. Make an adjustment when you evaluate and realign yourself with God's plan and his, his attitude towards you. Have you guys ever heard the, the urban legend about the way that you catch a monkey? Have you heard about this before? That if you want to catch a monkey, you take a, take a banana and put it in a jar with a smaller opening. And so when the monkey reaches his hand in to grab the banana, it makes a fist around the banana. He can't get his hand out. Have you heard this before? So the theory is the monkey wants that banana so badly that he will not let go of it. Can't get his arm out. And so it's easy to trap him that way. Hmm? The same theory would work for me if you put a Snickers bar in the jar. <laughs> But you know, I mean, how sad is it if we were to look back and see that we've become stuck in life because we weren't willing to let go of things that kept us trapped. This is, this is such a good time to move into a new direction with Jesus, following him, to let go of the things that need to be let go of and to find some newness this year. So I want you to think this week. Think about the things that need to be left behind. Find a time to measure your progress and forgive yourself for mistakes. And here's to a new you in 2019. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, your word tells us that, that when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. And that is our desire, that is our goal for this coming year is to have a closer relationship with you, a closer walk. We want to do what Simon and Andrew and James and John did. We want to leave behind the things that are holding us back so that we can walk with you and experience newness of life and fullness of life. And so help us to identify the things in our lives that are keeping us from doing that. Show us, Lord, the things that we need to address. And maybe the things that we don't want to look at in our lives. But show us the things that we need to address this year. And give us, give us encouragement. Give us support. And give us grace as we slowly leave those things behind so that we can follow you. Lead us and guide us and love us day by day as we commit ourselves to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name.
Amen.